Our fourth step, establish relevant risk-related metrics. Relevant met metrics clearly link to something you want to accomplish that has a direct benefit to the business. We can approach this step in a couple of ways. One, establishing metrics that demonstrate our role in enterprise risk management. And two, establishing metrics that demonstrate our alignment with business strategy and objectives. Risk-related metrics will allow you to determine and demonstrate to management how security programs and services are clearly impacting the business's risk. To develop these, first, prioritize the risk confronting your enterprise. What is the appetite for risk? Which are most important to the business and which have the greatest potential consequences? Secondly, Determine which risks security has full or partial responsibility for managing. Remember, security is a shared delegated accountability in several key areas. Third, inventory the products and services you have in place to address these risks. Are there any gaps? Fourth, identify the results management wants to see from its investment in these products or services. How these products and services are clearly impacting risk management, either positively or negatively, and whether they're doing the job reliably and cost effectively. Now your focus on risk also provides an opportunity to demonstrate security's alignment with the business and our value contributions. Can you envision a metric that demonstrates the results of the steps you're taking to reduce or manage program costs while at the same time maintaining or improving the state of security in your company? As you establish your metrics, focus on developing those that could serve the dual purposes of assessing risk and demonstrating value. Highlight those met metrics that show such benefits as increased protection and decreased cost. Enhance customer satisfaction or confidence due to security measures. Increased recovery of losses. Reduce risk to revenue generating activities. Reduced insurance costs or reduced risk of attack. And reduce notable audit findings attributable to security defects. All of these demonstrate the value equation. This slide has been prepared by a security executive who is fully engaged in using his unique perch to teach, to influence, and to measurably impact key risk indicators. Look at the focus here. Severity of security defects uncovered by proactive investigation, audit, and after action analysis. This department isn't satisfied with merely documenting incidents. They probe to identify the root causes of risk events. Instead of waiting for an incident to occur, this department tests internal controls as well as security awareness and then proactively identifies gaps in protection. This security manager works hand in hand with internal audit to connect the dots, combine the knowledge, and thereby gains an ally with high level access. Look at the results he's reporting significant reductions in three or four areas of enterprise risk accomplished in the past three quarters. As these probing exercises were completed, the results were fed back to business process managers for confirmed corrective action. His sales pitch to the line manager was, hey, we're seeing some soft spots in your controls as a result of our incident postmortems, and we want to fix things before there's a nasty surprise. Can we do this together? This security organization understands how to demonstrate value by eliminating risk before it happens and by building a shared accountability model with his constituents. Don't be afraid of the question from the boss, how do we compare with our peers, peer industry group? Your best answer is, glad you asked. 
we've been benchmarking in a number of areas, and this is one of them. In these two examples, we've contacted several colleagues in our industry who frequently exchange security-related information on a regular trusted basis. In both cases, we needed to carefully qualify a common baseline for comparison. Since physical security operations are common and typically larger expenditures, we looked at the total number of security officers, supervisors, and command center personnel at each of our facilities with a resident population and determined the ratio of security officers to employees served. Likewise with occupied space, the square foot data included only those occupied spaces served by our own proprietary or contracted guard force operations and employee data housed within these occupied spaces. Now you can go crazy with qualifiers, so we try to keep it on a, uh, on a common baseline as much as possible. Our data is represented at the top bar with each comparator in descending order. Thus, we serve 310 employees per security officer and our closest peer is 200. Similarly, our security operations respond to 75,000 square feet of occupied space and our nearest peer is 62,000. In both examples, the median spread between our levels of efficiency using these two common criteria and that of multiple peers is significant. In this example, consider the implications for the respondents at the bottom of this chart. In follow-up, we learned that there was a heavy use of fixed security posts and multiple command centers versus our elimination of fixed posts in favor of technology. Shareholders value tangible results. However, risk is often intangible. There are many multiple of factors that influence enterprise risk, and they've evolved in complexity and diversity over the past couple of decades. Terrorism, the velocity of changes in business models, absolute reliance on technology, globalization, and swings in risk appetites have directly impacted the visibility of security, but one question remains. Is a lack of risk incidents here directly attributable to the effectiveness of our security programs? Well, let's consider this for a moment. Is it possible for you to show how measurably effective security contributes to, the, to risk avoidance? Put another way, can you make a common sense connection from a clearly effective set of security measures to a reduced likelihood of attack? Let's say you have implemented a laptop theft mitigation program and laptops are being stolen all around your region, but your company has fewer none going missing. Can you sell a notion to management that the thieves have found easier marks? We have information and knowledge to influence management's level of understanding and appreciation of risk exposure. We have the obligation to test our internal controls and demonstrate their effectiveness and to discover the root causes of failed protection whenever these failures occur. Now, our metrics enable our ability to inform and influence. A proactive metrics program focuses on program performance and delivers a measurably increased depth of knowledge on risk dynamics. I'll explore several examples of this in this presentation. <laughs> 